Hi there, this is Pranav from TechWiser and let's talk about CMD today. So what exactly is CMD? Well, I'm pretty sure most of you have a good understanding of what it is, but in case you don't, consider it like this. To access our Windows computer, most of us use the GUI, that is a Windows Explorer to create a folder, copy files and move around in different directories. But initially when the PCs were just basic, terminal was the only way to access them. And then the computers got powerful, we had images, videos, the internet and then slowly the terminal was replaced with a GUI. And it makes sense, why use a terminal when you can do the same thing much faster and intuitively with a GUI. But there are certain things where command prompt still has an edge. The same reason why network and system admin prefer terminal over the GUI. It's faster. Now, in this video, I'm not going to talk about the basic CMD stuff like copying files, moving things around and playing Star Wars. Trust me, it's not useful. That's not the way I use command prompt. However, there are certain commands which are still useful to this day. So let's check them out. Consider ping command as a sonar. That is, it sends a data packet to a target machine and then receive the reply back. And based on the ping time, you can calculate two things. One, if the remote machine is on or not. And if it is, then how far it is. For instance, if I ping 127.0.0.1, which is the local host or this computer, then you can see the TTS or the time taken for every round trip is less, meaning the connection is fast, which obviously makes sense since the computer is talking to itself only. The packet is not leaving the system. Now, if I ping other devices on my network, say my phone, then you can see that it takes more time, meaning the device is a little bit far, but still relatively close. This also tells you if the other device is on or not. That is, if I close or disable the internet on my phone, then the ping goes down as well. So if you are a parent who wants to know if your child is sleeping or up with his computer in his room, then simply find the system IP address using third party application or the router and then ping that IP address. If you got a reply, it means the computer is up and if there is no reply, it means the computer is shut down or at least not connected to the internet. Similarly, when the internet goes down, the first thing that I do to troubleshoot it is to ping the router IP address. If I am getting a reply, it means the connection between my computer and the router is fine. And there is a problem at my ISP end. But if I am not getting any reply, then the router could be down or either there is a problem in the line between me and the router. Similarly, you can also ping a web server to find out the website is down or it's just slow. For instance, if you are playing FIFA on EA server, then do a ping to EA server. And if the ping is more than 100 milliseconds, it means that the connection is garbage. You will lose the game even if you are react in time. In simple words, the ipconfig command on Windows, or also known as ifconfig on Mac and Linux, is used to find the network details of your computer, like what is the router default gateway, what is the MAC address, and what is the IP address of your computer. Simply type in ipconfig slash all and it will release a bunch of information about this computer, like the host name. So whenever you are connecting this device on the network using Samba sharing, then you will need to type this exact host name. Similarly, physical address is the MAC address of this computer, but as you can see, there are multiple MAC or physical addresses. So if somebody is asking me to give my MAC address to them, what should I suppose to tell them? Well, most computers have more than one network card and so is the MAC address. But a computer at a given instance only use one to connect to the internet. So if you are looking at the MAC address, look for the one that has IP address associated with it. This will be your MAC address and IPv4 is the IP address. Default gateway is the IP address of your router. Mostly it's 192.168.0.1 or 1.1. If you type this IP address in your browser, then it will open the router's login page. And the DNS server as the name suggests shows you what is your current DNS server is. If it starts with 192.168 point something and something, then it means you are using the default DNS provided by your ISP. But you can always have the option to change it to custom one like smart DNS proxy if you want to bypass your stations on video streaming sites or Google DNS for faster internet or you can even use open DNS if you want to block adult content or objectionable content on your network. 
If you change your DNS server, then the effect doesn't take place immediately. Or let's say if you're facing a network issue on your specific computer, but the other computers on the same network are running fine, then you'd need to flush your DNS. To do this, type in ipconfig forward slash flush DNS. Similarly, whenever I experience a flaky internet connection, the first thing I do is reset the connection by typing ipconfig slash release, which will release the connection. So don't do this if you need to be connected to the internet. Next, type in ipconfig slash renew. This will reconnect the internet with a new IP address. Most of you might not know this, but Windows include a system file checker tool, which can check your Windows file system and see if there is a problem or not. And if any system file is corrupted or missing, then it might even correct that problem. To use this tool, open up command prompt window as an administrator and then run fst slash scan now and wait for it to do its thing, which can take anywhere from 5 to 15 minutes depending on your system performance. Overall, if you have a difficulty to diagnose an issue, then give it a try, as it is useful baseline action to take when your operating system is acting weird. Your PC makes a lot of connection to the internet, and while most of them are harmless, but there is always a chance that there is a malware in your computer which is connecting to the internet without your knowledge. If you suspect a malicious program running in the background, then you can always check it with the netstat command. Simply open up the command prompt with the admin privileges and then type in netstat-abf5. Now let me explain what it means. The A option tells it to show all the connection and listen to ports. The B option adds whatever application is making the connection to the result. And F option displays the full DNS name for each connection option. This way you will have a more easier understanding of what connections are being made. And the 5 option calls the command prompt to pull every 5 seconds for each connection. So as you can see, there are dozens of connections made to the internet and most of them are Windows processor trying to update or do security check. But if you detect something malicious connected to the internet, then you can do the NS lookup of that IP address to see what exactly are there. Most of the time it's not clear what programs are actually running. So what I usually do is, I look for the process ID, which is always unique, and then go to the task manager and look for the same process ID and try to identify which application is running. For more clarity, you can also click on show device location option. And if it sounds like a malicious program, use Google to confirm, then it's better to get rid of it. Every device that is connected to the internet has an IP address, be it your computer, smartphone, smart car, even a website has an IP address. Because after all, website is a bunch of files running on a computer which is connected to the internet 24 by 7. When you type the domain name, say into the browser address bar, your computer looks up the IP address associated with that domain. You can always use the nslookup command to find out the information out for yourself. For example, you can type in nslookupgoogle.com at the command prompt to quickly find out server's assigned IP address. So what is it used? Well, sometimes when the websites are blocked on your computer using the host file method, then you can use the nslookup command to find the IP address of any website. And once you have the IP address, simply type it in the browser and you will have the access to that page. You can also perform the reverse lookup by typing the IP address to find out the associated domain name with it. For instance, say you got an email from an IP address or if you see an IP address on your system settings that you are not familiar with, then you can do the reverse DNS search like nslookup 8.8.8.8 which will tell you that it is Google DNS. The trace route command traces a route a packet takes to reach its destination and then track its every single hop. First the connection goes to your router. So I know that the router is fine. Next, it goes to the ISP, which is VSNL in my case. And fun fact, most ISP in India, including the government-owned VSNL, lease the internet from Tata or Reliance. There are only two major providers in India, that's it. And there are only four ports in India, including Mumbai, Chennai and Kochi. For me, it's Chennai. And then it goes to Singapore, using the underwater tunnel. Yes, all your internet comes from the wires that are laid under the water which further goes to the different server provider before it reaches to the final server. In a nutshell, if you are having an issue connecting to a website, then Traceroute can show you where exactly the problem is. Is it at your router level, your ISP or in a particular server? 
Well, this is all for now. I hope you find this video useful. And if you did, then give this video a big thumbs up. Also, let me know which videos you want me to cover in the comment section below. So that's pretty much it. I will see you in the next one. Like always, thank you for watching.